afternoon, everyone. I'm sure most of you are very familiar with this little creature up here. She is so important to our way of life, it has led some scientists to hypothesize that without her, humans would start to die within four days. If you just so happen this morning to wake up, put on a pair of jeans, cotton t-shirt, eat smashed out of a coffee, each one of these things is directly attributable to her. This little creature, which allows hipsters to spend their house deposits every Sunday morning, is of course the European honeybee. Now, like her name suggests, the European honeybee is not native to Australia. She's not native to Australia. Um, but she is actually so important to Australia, she's the only native pollinator for the vast majority of our crops. In order for us to enjoy many of the fruits, vegetables and nuts that we love, a tiny insect needs to pick up pollen from one flower depositing it on another, completing the process of pollination. Although working on a tiny scale, her contribution to nationwide agriculture is immense, with valuations between $8 billion and $19 billion annually. However, in many parts of the world, she is under threat from the tiny varroa mite and the so dead diseases that it spreads. Australia is the only continent in the world that doesn't have the varroa mite, but incursions have happened and it may be able to establish into the future. In light of such a threat, how can we move away from our over-reliance on the honeybee and secure food production now and into the future? Currently, my research focuses on assessing the pollinators within apple and cherry orchards within Western Sydney and across the growing regions of New South Wales. When speaking to the farmers, it was very clear there were differences of opinion. Some weren't even sure what type of pollinators they had on their crop, whilst others were, cons were spending considerable amounts of money hiring honeybee hives for the flowering season. Despite these differences in opinion, one thing remained clear, that pollination services were paramount to food quality and yield come harvest time. So I started a two-way dialogue to identify the individual pollination problems each one of these farmers had. We documented that in our local farms and orchards, we had an absolute plethora of native insect pollinators. This included things like native bees, flies, wasps and beetles that were all capable of pollinating both apple and cherry flowers. So in knowing that we have these insects within our orchards, how can we naturally promote and boost them within these systems? So, just like humans, Australian native pollinators require good nutrition year-round. However, agricultural landscapes typically only offer a bountiful floral resource for two to three weeks whilst the crop is in flower. So in consultation with the growers, we decided to map the floral resources within these orchards for two years, effectively making a floral calendar. This would identify firstly, what types of pollinators we had within these systems, what types of flowers were they um, supported by, and whether there were any nutritional gaps within that year. Currently, in addition, we are working to develop a native seed mix that can also be uh, broadcast onto these orchards uh, to provide nutritional requirements year round. Currently, there are commercial seed mixes available, but they don't have native species within them. My PhD student, Lena Schmidt, has just successfully sown 50,000 plants native to the Western Sydney region into orchards in the past three weeks. We have also just completed our first year of a research experiment using over 360 bee hotels to see whether native habitat enhancement can help facilitate bee numbers within these systems. This research has enabled farmers to accurately identify the pollinators that they have on their crops. It has also allowed them to understand what types of flowers within these systems are promoting these pollinators. It has also led to farmers adopting different management practices. Something so simple as leaving the grass within the orchard unknown over winter has meant that flowering species are able to persist and support these pollinators. Our research has also inadvertently affected how the farmers manage their insecticide spray regimes, with some farmers telling us that they prefer not to spray when native pollinators are active and therefore do all their spraying at night, whilst others have actually stopped spraying altogether. Our research has fortuitously coincided with significant public groundswell about the plight of pollinators worldwide. The findings of my study to date 
are actually contributing both to the scientific community but also to wider public perceptions. Outreach opportunities provided through both Western Sydney University sustainability campaigns and public worldwide uh, national, national and radio broadcasts have meant that anybody from uh, have meant that anyone with a balcony, a backyard or a farm has been able to successfully and positively contribute to the health of native bees. I will continue to work closely with the growers to inform best practices in their orchards, whilst myself and my team continue to expand our research across species, regions and states of Australia. Thank you. 